I'm a Tuba judge and I bless God for this great opportunity to bring his word to you. It, it, it's, 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 I'm so excited. It's, listen, there is nothing as beautiful as just, just, just yielding to the spirit of God and, and, and let him bring forth his word to you. That's why, listen, I, I am so glad. When I say I'm glad for this opportunity, it's not because I'm preaching to you. It is because I'm being used by the Spirit of God. That's exciting. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Are you ready to receive your daily bread today? A miracle is coming your way today. What is that thing that you're expecting? What is that bill that needs to be sorted out today? Listen, within this 24 hour, within this day, today, today, you will receive it. So are you ready to receive it? All right. Say this with me. Say, Father... I demand today my daily bread. Lord, that bill that should be settled today is part of today's daily provision. So I receive it. You can, you can name that bill. Name, be specific. Name it. That thing you have to pay for today. Name it. And Lord, I receive the provision for it. That's my daily bread. Praise God. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, now daily bread is not what just what you will eat. It means daily provision. Praise God. You shouldn't carry anything over till tomorrow. Settle today's needs today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Let's pray, Father. We bless you for this great time of fellowship with you, Lord. Thank you for your Spirit that is at work in us, removing every burden and destroying every yoke. Thank you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Praise God. Now, we are talking about how God sees to it. Praise God. Yeah. And that's what I've been explaining to you. He made Jesus our high priest. And he told us that this priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek. Now, some of you know Jesus as our Savior, but you don't know him as your high priest. And if you know him as your high priest, understand the order of priesthood to which he belongs. And it's not going to change because God swore by an oath. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen, you shouldn't listen to a message like this and become broke another day. You shouldn't. Because I'm telling you practical ways to deal with this now. You believe me, you will prosper. It's as simple as that because I'm a prophet of God. You believe me, you will prosper. You have believed in the Lord, yes. But now believe what I'm telling you, praise God, because it's from the Lord. I didn't make this up. And I'm telling you, this is where I live. And, and I've lived this way for many years. And I look back, everything, no regrets. See, you, you, you look at your life and, and you just realize that everything you have, Jesus gave it to you. I remember many years ago, I was still a student then. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I have made up my mind to follow you. And this is a testimony that I want to have in life. That everything Thing I own, everything you will see around me. I want to be bold enough to say, God gave it to me. I'm telling you the truth. I made that decision many years ago. And, and, and I look back today, and truly that's the testimony. I can point out everything from, 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 from my wife, children, physical things, everything around us i can point it out to you and tell you the day 
the word of the Lord came concerning it. And how we believed him and received it physically. Now, of course, there are many more things we're still believing and we're still walking into, but it's in the pattern is form and, and it's just multiplication that is taking place right now. So what I'm telling you works. I'm not telling you some imaginative ideas. I'm telling you what is practical, what you can also do because God is not the respecter of persons. Listen, if he can do it for me, if he can do it for my family, do you know what it is to, to live a life that you don't bother anybody for anything? You, 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 you are, rather you are just a blessing to other people. I'm telling you the truth. And I'll tell you one secret, Satan, Satan can never get involved with this. You know why? He doesn't understand it. <laughs> I'm telling you, he, he doesn't understand it in any, he, and I, sometimes, you know, sometimes my wife and I, we talk about this, like, you know, it's, it's so amazing that, that Satan will just sit down and be looking at us and like, how, how do I attack these people now? Well, how, how do I, how do I, how do I attack them? And he keeps looking and looking and he cannot find, <laughs> okay, what should I attack? Should I attack their love? And he is trying to look for the place that I love my wife. He can't find it. He can't find it. He is trying to, okay, what does he do to show his love? He can't find it. Okay, what does she do to, he can't find it. You know why? Because, hala broke here. I don't love my wife directly. I pray you understand this. And the same thing with her. We love ourselves in him. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know, you, you may not understand what I'm saying right now. Like, oh, love is a physical thing. No, it's not. It's the deepest spiritual thing. Because I tell you the truth, when you get to the real place of love, then you've got into the real place of God. I tell my wife all the time, look, I have been commanded to love you. <laughs> I, I can do without, I, I can do otherwise. I can't. I can't. It, it has nothing to do with what you do. It has nothing to do with how you look. Of course, my wife is beautiful, praise God. But you see, it's a command from him. And she too, the same thing. So we don't walk around thinking, mm, does my wife still love me? Does my... She has no choice. Same way I have no choice. The same way. Now, Satan is trying to look at how, how do I? So you, you just, you just loving the Lord and, and you know that he loves your spouse. Yes, he does. And you're just like, okay, Lord, what do I do? And you're just fellowship. And no pattern. We don't have patterns that you can hold on to. We are spontaneous. I'm telling you, we are spontaneous. The only pattern we have is towards him. <laughs> and he just said, hey, I want you to do this to your wife. I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, how will Satan know that? How? The same thing with our finances. He, he looks at us, what do I attack that will affect their finances? He can't find it. He can't find it. Why? Because we have dealings with our high priest. Praise God. Yeah, we have dealings with our high priest. We, we go before him and say, Lord, oh, it's so beautiful. You know, we hold hands together and say, let's tight. And say, Lord, thank you. You've blessed us. And Lord, here's your tithe. And we, we, we wait for instructions from you on what to do with this. Yeah. And we're there, trusting, doing, going about our daily activities. And then the Lord just speak and say, I want you to give so, so, and so. Well, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I'll share with my wife, I said, this is what the Lord is saying. Like, oh, yeah. I, I, I think I'm in agreement because I had that same. I said, fine, okay, so we'll do it then. We'll do it. And then that is it. See, the devil never knew who we're going to send money to. Guess what? So also he would never know where our harvest is going to come from. 
never 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 see when you live like this you will never be stranded in life never never that is the kind of high priest we have he the bible says he is able to save us to the uttermost not the one that begins to prosper you today and tomorrow you now shipwreck no as long as we obey him we live in him everything that comes lord Oh, we, we need to get this done. Now you will understand when Jesus said, don't lay up your treasure here on earth. Glory to God. Lay it up in heaven. How do you lay it up in heaven? Jesus said, no one can come to the Father but through me. So, the only way you are... Pro this, thing, this thing is not a, you know, give, receive. You know, um, principles here. Pre <laughs> we take our our finances to Jesus who is the door Kabusa bread nehekeya he is the door monta so he is the door to the bank of heaven <laughs> so we take it to him and say lord here is it thank you thank you and then he he begins to tell us i wanted to give it to this person and give it to this person hey guess what the moment he begins to instruct you on that he has taken it Oh, he has received it. You, you know what? Someone calls you. I want you to see this. Someone calls you up and says, Hey, please, can you loan me a million naira? I'm going to pay you back in two months. Say, mm, I trust you. Okay. Or you may even write an agreement that I'm taking a loan of one million. Okay, so give me an account number to send you the money you say ah no um, this is what i want you to help me do please can you send two hundred thousand to so and so person and send uh, three hundred thousand to so and so person and send four hundred thousand to so and so person and then he dispenses the money now as long as you do what he tells you to do with that money and you dispense that one million naira hey guess what he has received it so to you, he is holding your one million naira. You are not going to all those people that he told you to give it to and say, come, I gave you 400,000 out of one million. Where is it? He won't do that. You will go to the one who you had an agreement with. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the same thing, we bring our tithes to Jesus. He instructs us what to do with it. And guess what? He is the one that is going to be fully responsible. And bear in mind, bear in mind, he cannot not bless us. It's too late to decide otherwise. Too late. You know why it's too late? He already became poor. And he said, the reason for my poverty is so that you will become rich. Now, this was what he did that qualified him by the father to make him the high priest. Hmm. Abraham did something. And that is why till this day we call ourselves the seed of Abraham, the children of Abraham. So we say Abraham's blessing. No, we, we say Abraham's blessing. You know that song? Abraham's blessings are mine. Praise God. Now, now the, there is a blessing God gave to him, Abraham. And there is a portion of the blessing that belongs to his seed. We are that seed. And that's why we enjoy everything. But guess what? Before God could entrust Abraham with that blessing in reality, God told him, give me your son, your only son. And Abraham obeyed. And from that moment, God said, Abraham, now you, I know that you trust me. See what? In blessing, I will bless you. I will bless your seed. Confirm, Abraham, for you to have done this. Listen, go and sleep. See me? I will fulfill everything. So the same thing with Jesus. God had intended to make him the high priest. And God, God was instructing him. And God said, look, you know you're rich. You own everything I own, right? And Jesus, yeah. But you are going to live like a poor man because of them. Mm. Okay. All right. 
I'll do it. Jesus willingly became poor for us, brothers and sisters. That was what qualified him to be the one who will administer the blessing to us. Did you get that? So it's too late. The onus is now on you to participate in the lifestyle that produces the kind of miracle or puts you in position where he sees to it. Did you get that? Were you blessed? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I don't want to see you walk in poverty anymore. Listen, brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter where you are. You can start this process and become everything that God has made you to be if you stick with it. God bless you. Listen, have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.